Okay, now for some fun. Let's build an ant. We don't know how ants work. You see them sort of making this walk around and, and uh, you know, eating the rest of your lunch that you've thoughtfully left under your, under your seat. And, and but let's actually build a finite state machine that makes an ant get out of a maze. So here's a little maze. Now, our ants, for reasons that are lost in the mists of time, have eight legs. Um, <laughs> For those of you who, who don't strike, that doesn't strike you as funny, you should go look at an ant carefully. Okay. Okay, so the strategy of getting out of a maze, at least simple mazes, are, are put your right hand on the wall and just follow along and eventually you'll come out of the maze. Okay. Um, and so we're going to do that. We're going to build a little finite state machine for an ant, the right antenna to the wall. So let's construct a state machine as we go. And you know, follow along because this is, you know, this is usually where you are in an engineering assignment involving state machines. You're saying to yourself, I forget the theme song for Lost in Space. There's actually been several Lost in Space shows, but well, anyway, I won't try to hum it. The, the idea is here's an ant, and as an engineer, you sort of have to put yourself in the position of the ant and figure out what it is you need to do, and then you encode that in the states. So initially the ant is lost, and there really isn't much for the ant to do except to go forward and, until he hits something. So here I am, I'm the ant, I have a left antenna and a right antenna, and I can tell when one of them hits something. Okay, so the, the, it has two inputs, an L and an R input, and basically in the absence of no other information, I'm just going to walk forward until I hit hopefully the edge of a maze, one of the walls in the maze. And that means that one or both of my antennae will suddenly signal a one, saying I've done that. So I'm going to basically, in the lost state, I move forward, so I can move forward, turn left, and turn right. That's what the ant can do. Um, and if neither antenna is touching, I keep doing that. Otherwise, I, I'm going to go, I've, I've hit something, and now I'm going to change my behavior. So I'm going to need a new state to represent the fact that I found my first wall. So my strategy when I find a wall, so I'm going to come over here and, and walk up, my strategy if I want to put my left, my right antenna on the wall is simply then to say rotate until my right antenna becomes clear. Okay, that's my, my first step. And my, I'm, what I'm trying to do, the behavior I'm trying to implement is going like this. I'm going to step forward and uh, I'm going to turn away from the wall and step forward and then I'm going to turn back toward the wall and my antenna will hit again. So I'm going to sort of be bouncing down the wall as I move forward. Okay, so I, here I've got in a situation where some antenna has hit the wall. I'm going to rotate until both antennas are free. I'm going to rotate counterclockwise, which should have just made my right antenna clear the wall that I hit. Okay, that's what that state does. And now in the next situation, I'm going to, I've, I'm now in theory parallel to the wall with the wall to my right. Now the next step is I'm going to step forward and go like that. So the idea is I'm going to keep sort of bumping up and down the wall where I'm sort of moving forward and I'm turning to the right and the left as I go like this. That's the behavior I'm trying to create. Everybody sort of with me on that? What happens if I'm bumping down this wall here, boom, 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 and I reach out, <laughs> it's gone. What did I experience a corner, right? You know. And so what behavior do I want to do at that point? If you were the ant, what would you do? You're just going to keep sort of staggering around to the right, okay, hoping that you'll, hit the, you'll get around to the opposite corner. And so what we're going to do is that's represented by, by that diagram there. So that's a state diagram that, where the ant is basically running forward and, and, uh, and hitting a wall, and away we go. Okay, is this the best we can do? In particular, did you notice sort of, the, sort of a, the similarity between traveling down a wall and then processing a corner? Okay, so it turns out that this five state machine actually contains some equivalent states. So we look at this machine, two states are equivalent if they have identical outputs. In other words, I'm telling the ant to do the same thing in the current state. Are there states in this diagram where the, we're telling the, giving the ant the same control signal? Well, let's see. Uh, that one's only F. There's no other state that's only F. This one's TL. There's no other state that's only TL. This one's TLF. There's no other state that's both turning left and going forward. Ah, but these two states down here, turn right and move forward, 
there, these are two states in which the state machine is producing the same output. So those two states are potentially equivalent. Okay, and then considering these two states as possible candidates to be equivalent, I'm going to ask the question, does every input take them to an equivalent state? In other words, what I want to do is, is the behavior when I see an R or an L in this state the same as the behavior I see in an R and an L in that state? And in fact, if you look closely at the diagram, you will discover that in the, both cases, R takes them to wall two, and not R, well, if these two states are equivalent, it's like a loop back to itself. Okay, so, that's, so this arc and that arc are in fact arriving at the same state if those two states are equivalent, um, and, and so forth and so on. Everybody sort of happy with that? So it turns out that these two states are exactly equivalent, and I can replace that diagram with this diagram. Okay, why do I prefer this diagram? I know it's smaller, but practically, if you were going to run off and build hardware, what would be the difference? Yes, sir? Right, going from five states, which required three bits, I now only have four states, and I only have to buy two bits. I only need two bits of state, which means my ROM is half the size. Right, I've taken one of the inputs away from the ROM, so I've, I've reduced the number of inputs to the ROM by one, which means that the total number of locations in the ROM has been halved. Okay, so I can go off and convert this diagram into a truth table. Um, in some cases, I've used don't cares to encode the truth table. That'll make my logic simpler. And when I'm all done with that, I can turn that truth table into a schematic diagram.